Okay, so I've got a question for you, Anna. Um, I really liked your presentation, but what do you think about the next step? Because you showed something that is really super important with uh, with the way you you use like the the physical models and the and the stuff you can learn as an early, not early career, sorry, like a young young student, young right? Young student. Uh, would you think that for later stages, and this is probably like next step for you? like a 3D scan of this would help you to bring them into some sort of mixed reality or, or transformation because then you unlock other anti other no other software and other ways of teaching them through mixed reality VR and all that which yeah. we've discussed in the past together so I, I was trying to poke you in a way to get a response whether like the next step would be like a digitization process, like the one we saw downstairs or something, or high resolution, and then translation. Okay, the question is no. <laughs> it's not the next step, it's the after, 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 after next step. Uh, because at this stage, the students have to learn about geometry, and they have to learn about construction logic. I was uh, speaking before with you about uh, wanting to teach our students computational thinking and algorithmic thinking. So let's say it's more important at that stage, instead of digitizing a blob or a whatever shape we got there, to understand the logic that constructed this object. So one object comprises of uh, some uh, little cubes that are, uh, let's say, aggregated in uh, with certain rule. Let's say two like this, one like this, two like this, one like this. And this creates an algorithmic logic. And as we go up, we get smaller. So at a later stage, one could write that into an equation and then kind of uh, use this algorithmic logic to build it. Uh, we, of course, do virtual reality, augmented reality, and 3D scanning, and we have a green room in the university because my colleagues agree with me that these are important stuff. But um, it's a completely different process, and it should come at a much later stage when we have already familiarized ourselves with these tools, so we don't really depend on the tool, and then we just think creative with the tool. Sculpting and sculpture. Eh? That's why I thought like if you digitize it, then you got like a next level sculpturing of course. thing. And That's why it was the, your process was really nice. And then when you said about sculpturing in the final product, I thought like the scan is another opportunity to sculpt with triangulation. Definitely, yes. Before starting your let's say combinatorial logic and computational logic. I don't know. That was yeah. Continue on, on the discussion. Uh, I actually have uh, well, one question uh, and, and the comment also to, to make because I, I was thinking that using the handmade uh, uh, mo uh, uh, models, uh, while you do that, I mean, the, the, the technique is prone to error. In the Sorry, sense, the technique, is... the, the technique is prone to error. You can, you might not be very accurate when you cut things, and that error that you get out of the cutting is might be actually quite nice in the design. And once you use that, uh, models that contain errors, shifts in orthogonality, and things like that, that are nice in the model, you can actually use that to teach the students to use software, because the software. <laughs> Uh, uh, tends to uh, uh, somehow forces you into or orthogonal systems because they are easier to, to use. So using this uh, uh, approach, uh, like reproducing the exact errors of the model and taking advantage of that, might be also an interesting way to teach how to master the software and not being mastered by the software, mm -hmm. which happens a lot. So. Could you try to ex I, I explore think, I that? think you, I believe you expressed it in such a wonderful way that I don't want to add anything else. But I totally agree, because this kind of errors, we can never get them with the digital media. 
and um, the end, sometimes we find some qualities that are interesting and I'm, I'm sure that all the architects in this room have found a moment in their career, either as students or as professionals, that uh, they make an error and say, oh, well, what a wonderful error did I do now? So let's use it and proceed with that. Um, thank you so much for this comment. Yeah. No, no. It's just to um, go on from this remark from uh, Beirão. Uh, regarding the discussion where and when to introduce uh, digital tools or in the initial years of the course or in the final years, of course, I think Beirão gave a very interesting contribution about this non-dialectic position about where digital tools must enter on the course, only in the beginning, only in the end, in the mix, and so I, I think this, this reflection from Beram is, is quite interesting about this discussion also. Well, okay, <laughs> just let me say one, one, one more thing. I wrote two articles written in, in, in Portuguese because they were supposed to be a, a, a it, they're, they're not a scientific uh, article, it's more like a manifesto about uh, how we should teach architecture. And that's actually, I'm going to embed the question to Luis Manuel about this. Uh, um, because uh, my reflections are about uh, why do, are we always thinking about uh, uh, teaching architecture for the final purpose of designing buildings. Uh, and and I, I find out that in, in Portugal, most of the, uh, of the students that uh, reach the end of the course, they never practice. Yeah. Uh, they do other things. So I think we should be more open about uh, what we teach, because I think the most important thing we teach are the skills, a certain number of skills. And, and one of the important things about these skills, which uh, 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 is, is uh, point out, pointed out by Richard Florida as being one of the characteristics of the creative class, is uh, uh, to have digital skills. And, uh, and I think we should bet a lot on that. Even programming is important. And, and, and and, and I, I, I believe that if we do that, uh, we are actually f giving the education for the creative class, the perfect education for the creative class, because we're giving uh, 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 subjects on creativity methods, the design methods. Uh, uh, we're giving transdisciplinary uh, 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 courses on different levels from social sciences to uh, 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 mathematics, physics, uh, uh, tech, uh, technology. And the most important thing that makes the difference is actually the digital skills, because the, it positions that person in the 21st century with very strong skills. So my question to Luis Manuel is, is basically two things. Uh, first is if it's possible to have access to your data, because I think you must have a lot of interesting information about the subject. Let me finish my PhD. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and secondly, if uh, um, the, 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 the second question is if you have uh, uh, any thoughts about this subject, I mean, how should we uh, uh, intensify or not the digital uh, uh, skills in architectural uh, uh, education. Mm -hmm. So for the first question, let me finish my PhD. You will have um, all the data because I, I, I hope to have all the data published or open for, for everyone. Uh, and the second question, um, I have a, a lot of um, indicators and I understand that the the, the digital uh, uh, digital tools are uh, from the beginning now you have children uh, in two or three years he will start to play with uh, digital methods uh, when we use for example uh, Photoshop I don't know which tools they they transform the photo of the uh, maquette. 
um, uh, we are uh, working with di digital tools. Uh, m maybe the difference is uh, intelligent or not tools, uh, programming tools or uh, using uh, uh, mm, computers to uh, to like a uh, tablets or uh, drawing programs is is different. Uh, I know from from the beginning uh, it's important to to draw, and it, it, I don't mind if uh, you can draw in a paper or in a tablet, for example, or or you start to model in three D in a in a tablet or you are drawing. But it, it's important that for the for the head of, to practice the, how the shapes are. I think it's interesting the, the, the project they, they did in, in Greece because of the quickly transform. It's like plastiline or you, you, you can model uh, and the relation between the head and, and the model is immediate. Uh, in the digital tools are, are we are not ready or we are not so fast at practicing and, and, and learning. So because of that, maybe we need more tools, design more tools to, to think and model immediately, or uh, we must to continue with parallel uh, and analogical part of drawing and modeling. Uh, I, I was studying in one year in Portugal and I, I thought the, your form of education is good, to, and also you said that you are not uh, you are working with models, physical models. So I, I think it's uh, a very good way to to practice and to make architecture. Yeah, and uh, I don't know uh, where we must to uh, uh, establish the the digital tools like uh, uh, algorithm or parametric tools, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if it's part of the architecture teaching because the tools are changing two or three years of difference, we have new tools. So maybe we don't need to uh, uh, teach our AutoCAD, SketchUp, Revit, I don't know. Uh, the tools, uh, the people look for the tools and if they they find the, the correct tool. He w they will uh, start to learn, and but I think it's uh, parallel. It cannot be behind the structure of the uh, curriculum of architecture. May may I add something? Okay. I, I oh, sorry. No, no, no. You want? You want, sorry. you want first, and then I add second. Okay, okay. All the same thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Send it start. Okay. So we speak between. See us. you tomorrow. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know exactly when when uh, start uh, introducing digital tools on on, uh, on teaching, uh, but I, I am really sure about introducing algorithmic thin thinking. I, I think that this should be introduced as soon as possible. Yeah, not in the university before before. Uh, on my experience running since 1993, I have changed the aim of the analysis, the, the, the target. At the very beginning, I, I was focused in, in, in students who were supposed to be build, to build buildings, but um, over the time I discovered that it was much more interesting to forget that uh, final task and to train the students in on managing process to be rooted on the space, which includes, of course, buildings, but not only buildings, maybe processes in general, that is to design, the, uh, I don't know, a city, a, a room, a, a party, or whatever. Uh, they are second year students. That is my idea right, right now, okay? Thank you. Efkaristu. Parakalo. So he's uh, perfect in Greek accent, eh? Yeah. So um, 
I totally agree with both of them. Uh, I actually do agree that uh, architects don't necessarily design buildings. Some of our students currently in the economic crisis and in the construction crisis, they design buildings for video games or they design buildings for animations and for cinema. This is also a task for an architect because it's space, it's a building, yeah? no matter if it's getting constructed or not. Uh, and I would like to add to what Louis said, that uh, he, he tackled the topic of software. Yeah, uh, Nowadays we work with Rhino or Grasshopper or AutoCAD, but the idea is not to teach software, the idea is to teach geometry. So maybe in five years the landscape changes and we have different software, uh, but the students have to be trained to understand 3D space and all the generic concepts like texture mapping, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so well, so that they can easily adapt to any software change that they will have in the future. So yes, we do have to use the software to teach, but we shouldn't really focus on the software, but on the concepts and on the notions and the algorithmic logic, I totally agree. Um, and even programming, sometimes we do teach programming, but I, of course I do understand that it's not such user-friendly thing. Maybe Grasshopper is more user-friendly than to write code. Maybe Tassos will disagree with me. Some students uh, like it, some students know, but the core is the algorithmic logic, the computational thinking. So we all agree on that and um, we somehow need to empower these skills because these are the skills of the future, no matter if they build buildings or not. Well, uh, I believe there's a misunderstanding when we communicate between us, which is not digital or analog, and it's not just computer thinking. For example, um, there are also soft skills that we haven't talked about them. Maybe the foundations of El Libro Blanco, the Arquitectura, needs to be reviewed. Uh, also the curricula in architecture. But when you are training this computational thinking and whatever, which variables of the thinking are being developed we need to set, we need to look for a, a measurement of the different kinds of knowledge of training. If we want to try to know how our experiences, didactic experiences are working or are not working, or how they work in some students or not. So, uh, for example, in your experience that I believe it's quite good, I, I think, um, um, how to say it? I lost my mind. <laughs> Algorithmic thinking. Algorithmic thinking, that's all. <laughs> well, uh, I, I pass the word and if I get it up, I'll say. Yes. Okay, See, that, that is an extraordinary subject, of course, eh? and that the Sally example is very good because it's the, the kernel of education and relation with everything. Then uh, I think that there is a lot of things here, some have uh, done. How to introduce, of course, the, the, the tensions and the weight and the structure in this without disturbing the, the general critical thinking, that's one thing. I say that Gaudí was doing this <laughs> without any problem, but now it's difficult for students and for teachers. What is the role of the teacher in this process from the beginning? That is also should be defined. Not only the role of the, of the student, but the role of, of, the, of the teacher and the communication. Because this is, the, of course, the critical thinking of the student, but the, the culture of the teacher also is important. Because if not, uh, it's, it's just one part of the process of education. It's not only the student, also is the, the teacher. Then, uh, in some uh, Norway schools, they begin with dancing and music, not with geometry. And then, it's also another possibility. To see that the, the subject is very primordial and very complex, but very basic. And it's been very important to make this experimentation. In your case, it's good, and the others too. And the analytical going in contrary of the whole thing also, from the building to the idea, also is, is good. I think that 
Of course, none is perfect, <laughs> and there are a lot of things. But I like also the last point, uh, an idea of the Zimmerman theory of the system, the last theory of the system is very good. He says, well, space, for instance, no? going to space, not only so geometry, but most of space. He says, virtual space, infinite virtual space. Of course, then you can make digital, you can make all kind of programming, resonic, in, in the level of, of Aristotelian logics of the origin of the life and all that. Then you are in a very uh, virtual space where the relation between physical and social is completely open. No? The, going from this point of view in education is very nice. He making the inverse. And they say social space. Ah, social space is not so infinite com uh, as, the, as, the virtual, uh, as the virtual space. Then you need to apply it to a concrete situation and to see the social interaction here. Also, it's very open, but it's not open like the virtual. Eh? And then physical, and he finished with the physical, it's fantastic. The physical is the more concrete because needs not social interaction, needs social agreement and okay. sharing. But, and then this is the contrary of normal way. And this is a theory, she's a philosopher, but it's the contrary. But it's nice also the education is. Because you, you, you see, Another thing, no? What do we think? A, a, that is the, what happened really in reality. A building in a small village, a new building, is a social agreement and political agreement. And then you take the, the children in the village and you say, okay, this is, is, is architecture. Uh, practical theory, everything is there, no? But this is a political, they build this in your house, in your, and then, Immediately, the teachers with children, this is very dangerous, I don't want to enter in this. Why? Because you enter in verbal, you discuss the ideas of the, of the sitcom. But you don't want to the, discuss why this building physically is in this place. That seems not political. Yes, it's very political. But it's, it's nice because then education is junk. Because the students of education are ah, well, I am do you using digital or are you using uh, geometry? Uh, it is my will. Uh, and has something to do with it. Yes, or, uh, if, uh, you, you will learn to the moment that you should decide to do any historiography. Uh, and then you are wise to, to, to talk of the real ethical responsibility. No? Ah, but I am not that. I am not that thing. Because is implied from the beginning. The thing is, of course, that I think that's very good to open the, uh, the beginning a lot. You cannot take the children and say, well, you should be uh, uh, fight against the city hall. It's not this point. It's just to, to uh, if, if the critical thinking he is helping really is aware of what is happening in the environment and is aware of what is happening at the moment in, the, in all the levels. And then to introduce uh, engineer, introduce uh, art uh, as a tools to help to do this, uh, this uh, educative process between uh, my will, that is completely my will, because <laughs> the will is each person. We, I have not the will to correct the other will. <laughs> that is clear. But then uh, this in virtuality works in one way, but in social is another way, and in physical is another way. Then uh, this, uh, I know, uh, of course, uh, the school of Valparaíso in Chile is very good on that by tradition, because from the beginning, you are not making geometry, you are doing the social geometry of the group. And then there is the poetry of the group is from the first day. It's very strange because they have some kind of traditions like that uh, different. But uh, you see how uh, the students from the first day, they are confronted with the ethical and political thing. And also with the digital land. And this was I, my last uh, my, the idea was very nice in the, in the conference. That's Enrique Miralles went to, to Valparaíso and says, everybody copy me. These are my projects. 
They say, no, it's possible because this person has been before you exist. <laughs> no, 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 this I copy that. They, this is a copy. And then all the professors there were very strict. And it's true that they're very, very similar, very similar, the, the, the works of the school with uh, medallions. But, but because they go to the same origin of, of theory of organization, not because they, it's not a copy, just that both came from the avant with the first ideas of of abstraction and very, 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 very sensitive to the poetic uh, and uh, Miranjes also through all the relation with Aldo Van Eyck and the Smithson and uh, he has a very clear connection with and right in both sides, of course. Then you, you see the connection, he, he the notes of Miranjes were very good. These are my drawings. He said, no, no, he's not doing drawings, but both are going to the same origin of education. Both are going uh, started with the same. And he was very clear in uh, relation with Stihil, uh, uh, Olaf Holland, uh, with Picasso, and all the relations with the He was very, very good at that and made his own interpretation. Then, the, in, in, uh, in Chile, uh, discovered his own uh, design. Very surprised. He said, no, no, no. Is that the education is able to is not necessary. I think that this is in the Sabi, the English who have a tradition of that. Then you do a lot of things there digital, virtual, cultural, everything together. A sculpture, the sculpture is fantastic. I remember the the Greek sculptural people, they are the woman of 70 years, that they are painting the sculptures in Athens, fantastic glasses. You have the tradition, look at the tradition. They make a garden, this is fantastic. You know, it's completely natural. This person has done in Ali. He's, he has not been in the university, he's just a fantastic uh, artist. Mm -hmm. Everything, artist of scenography, theater, uh, and, and he's like a hero there. He's a kind of personality, right? But of course, then uh, the students, you know, that you see this in the, in the things, but it's because there is this a strong sensibility yeah, yeah. of the form. Yeah. Yeah. And you you, 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 you start advancing okay. Uh, okay, in, in some way, I, I want to, to, to answer the, the one question you raised at the very beginning, Moldestimate Europe. <laughs> Which is the role of the professor? I will say on my, on my own that is, for me, it's the person who defines at the very beginning the rules, and after that, let the kids play. Nothing else for me. Okay, should we? One more. One more? Um, okay. <laughs> okay. The, the coffee is get, getting cold. <laughs> okay, come on. Yes. So, uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the question when you introduce the digital in the lecture education is really very interesting one. Uh, and I think it's really positioned in the, uh, not correct, I don't like correct or wrong ways, but uh, it has to do with modes of thinking. So, it has to do with? Modes of thinking, because uh, working with digital tools requires a different way of thinking than working with so I wonder whether it has to do as well with the, uh, the way in which the actual and the possible interact, because it has to do with the definition of architecture. And to a great extent, architecture is about that kind of interaction, because you explore possibilities in the student, but you are actually evaluating against what is possible. So understanding the constraints that either the site imposes or the digital tools impose or other construction, materials, and so on, is very fundamental uh, in this type of relationship. So my question to uh, Johan about the um, exercise uh, is whether site comes into the process, uh, 
or there are abstract exercises purely volumetric of space and form. Do you, many students, consider the science at some point and how these constraints, how it works are the constraints to the positive? Yeah, thanks. That's a fantastic question. Uh, this is first semester. So in this particular exercise, there is no site. It's a pure volumetric study, just as you said. Uh, but um, I agree with all of the things you said because um, architecture is full of constraints. Environmental constraints, site constraints, feasibility. I mean, not every form can be built. Sometimes the buildings we design for the video games, uh, they could not possibly exist because they have a cantilever that is, you know, to the infinite. Uh, so uh, it's a game about constraints. Uh, the, I, I do study this topic when to introduce digital media for several years now, and I don't have an answer. I honestly don't know what is correct and what is wrong. But I do examine both opinions, and I kind of try to use both um, uh, methodologies, somehow to blend them. Uh, with uh, regards to... Um, the thinking processes, of course, the thinking modes, of course, it's very different in the digital and the analog. And of course, the constraints actually form the architecture we produce. But the only argument I would make here is that the more experienced the designer is, the easier he or she can handle constraints. So in the first semester, we try to have as little constraints as possible to leave the students to experiment free, freely with form. Of course. The constraint that the, the, the thing stands is a natural constraint of gravity. But uh, we wouldn't introduce at that stage. But next semester, we do introduce constraints. Yeah, there is a theory that the more the constraints, the more uh, in freedom the designer has. Yeah. This is also true. This is also true because the white paper makes us a bit, un yeah, she, she's right. Because a white paper makes us very uncomfortable. We don't know where to start. Yeah. Uh, the constraint is a little bit the volume. Yeah. Uh, actually, they do have constraints. They have the volume, they have the material, yeah. the thicknesses of the material, and the time that they do this model. So they do have constraints. They are just not named constraints. For me, it's a, very, it's a fascinating you know, exercise to yeah. consider how many more constraints you can introduce and what kind of results you get. Like. <laughs> Actually, I, I would definitely consider that. I thank you so much. <laughs> Even gravity is uh, zero, no? Yeah. Two more questions. Sorry. What else? I thank you, Master Project Jana, and I was wondering if, if the next step, since you uh, mentioned uh, a pretty algorithm, like next step, it maybe it would help. Uh, Describe geometry maybe as a as a, an alternative to analytic geometry because um, I think maybe in that process uh, these accidents that uh, you were talking about uh, you have to decide as an as a student if you want to keep them or take them away so that in in this way you take some responsibility about the shape and about the output of the algorithm. I think we can continue this on the coffee break because it's a very interesting <laughs> thing. And I would like to expand, but I'm not going to do it. Good. <laughs> at night. Yeah. Or at night. Yeah. Or oh, night break. <laughs> Maybe night break. Yeah, this is the last one. Oh, for It was a comment on uh, your presentation and on the last year. It seems very important. We are trying to make a foundation of uh, formal methods in mathematics. Uh, mathematics is uh, always uh, close to quantities and uh, numbers, and uh, nothing is more false than this. Uh, when the uh, tweet is of the uh, it was the first act of uh, science for humankind. Uh, in fact, he wrote three books. One was uh, uh, Related to numbers, yes, okay, and uh, arithmetic and so on. The second was geometry, and the geometry was not a number, it, it had no relation with numbers. Or there was an inverse relation with numbers. Geometry created the, the arithmetic, it, it was arithmetic that was uh, 
uh, and the structural geometry only later with the card uh, with the uh, analytical geometry uh, the inverse happened uh, uh, synthetic geometry is the inverse and then the third book is the book of uh, the methodology logical deduction where uh, Euclides, Euclides uh, went to uh, logical Aristotle's and applied that to uh, to the seat, to the mathematical seat. And uh, that logical was so important that uh, in the 19th century the foundation of mathematics became uh, logical. Mathematics was something logical. And uh, we call mathematics then uh, logic, uh, logical deductive uh, sciences. Now that what was and uh, we we no, do not uh, uh, found uh, make the foundation of mathematics in logic and we call mathematics no logic is not a part of mathematics. But <coughs> what is important here it is the the reason the reasoning the rational reasoning reason that is the important point. This is the important point. Uh, it's the rationality. The rationality, well, I'm not talking about the, the school or the, the poetics uh, of architecture in one well, of the poetics of uh, architecture in the, in the 20th century, last century. I'm talking about the philosophical rationality. Uh, that, that you present there, this index from that, that is not a communist singer. I saw the same thing in the Bible. It's written in one of the. <laughs> See, I, I, if I don't know, if I don't, uh, if, if I remember the Book of Kings, but it's written in one of the books uh, uh, of the symposia, and uh, the, the, the library, you, you can see it. Uh, and rationality is what you present, you are, you are trying to, uh, to teach us rational thinking. To the yeah. so that is, yeah. I think that is the main point. And rational, rationality for me is the control production of futures. We don't react immediately to, uh, to stimuli. Uh, we get the stimuli. We think about the stimulus, and when we think we try to get the better solution, and it's only when we have to react on reality. And that is the, the intermediate step of our thinking that differentiates as a, like as a, known as the, the, the rational animal. And I think this is the important thing. And I think the method, those methods we are trying to bring it here help this because they, they make the, this reasoning uh, explicit. And making that explicitation uh, uh, okay, Franklin. Uh, I have what to say after that, after these three books. Uh, just to say, nothing compares to rationality. Okay, yes, yes, in rationality we trust. Yeah, that's that's what we, that's uh, what we teach in second year at this school. Okay, uh, I don't know what are the the students in the future in in the adult life are going to do if they are to, to use this uh, this set of tools we give to them, but that is their responsibility. Nothing compares to rationality, of course, even in this world. <laughs> Thank you very much for your thoughts, uh, Franklin. Obrigado. Okay. So